Trouble at Ewing 23 is another episode that feels like someone had an idea for a story that was later integrated into a Dallas episode and it makes some of the characters look a bit cartoonish just when things were getting intriguing. J.R. and Sue Ellen are scheming on how to get J.R. back into power. Sue Ellen suggests simply starting another company, but J.R. is insistent on running Ewing Oil. I'M THE ELDEST BOY! <laughs> I AM THE ELDEST BOY! Ray just happens to ride by, so talk turns to how he is the newest baby boy of the group, and that could be dangerous. J.R. promises to stop both Bobby and Ray in their tracks. It's only a matter of time. Speaking of Ray, he approaches Ellie to thank her for welcoming him into the family, especially under such awkward circumstances. She says she's happy to welcome him to the family, but warns him that being a Ewing can be a tough gig. That's a lot to take on all at once. I know. Either way, she's happy for him, though. A lie detector test determined? That was a lot. Private investigator Mackie finds Pam at work and confirms that Pam's mother was working at Jerry's coffee shop three months after she supposedly died. He doesn't have much else to go on other than she hooked up with a traveling salesman, but he's going to keep digging. Jock and Ellie speculate that JR's near-death experience has reignited Sue Ellen's passion for him. Talk turns to Ray, and Jock thanks her again for accepting him into the family. Guys, she said that she's fine. Pamela pops in on Cliff and notices that he's prepping for a date. A first date, in point of fact. She does this because he hasn't gotten cheap yet. Pam is shocked when it's Donna Culver who shows up for the date. But she says that she'll leave them alone. In actuality, Pamela got it all wrong. Cliff is still splurging even though they're seven weeks into dating. Gotta keep that money flowing to impress Donna. Or so every guy in Dallas seems to believe. Bobby calls the foreman of Ewing 23 and says he'll be in the area to check out a patch of land nearby. In a foreshadowy moment with foreshadowy music of foreshadowiness, we see one of the roughnecks setting up a bomb. At cocktail hour, Jock is very impressed with all that Bobby is doing. As JR starts in on both Ray and Cliff though, Pamela can't resist the bait and lets spill that Cliff and Donna are an item. Bedtime comes and even Pamela is aware that she was led into a faux pas by JR. Bobby tells her not to worry about it, but he's barely paying attention. He even shrugs off news that Pamela's mother might still be alive. I mean, yeah, it might be a long shot, but for God's sakes, at least hear what the lead is before you kill her off, Bob. Pam says Bobby is becoming obsessed with Ewing Oil and becoming someone she doesn't like very much. But Bobby retorts with, nuh-uh, and that seems to be the winning counter-argument. JR is starting to worry about Donna and Cliff getting together. Cliff was only a nuisance before, but... If he were to get power behind him, he might be dangerous. JR also thinks Sue Ellen might be a little jealous that someone else got their claws into Cliff. We get an interesting, but disorienting, swish pan to reveal the scene had been in a mirror, and it's a nice way of pairing a visual reveal with an emotional reveal. Sue Ellen says that she has no interest in Cliff anymore, and her rekindled marriage with JR has made her happy. Donna arrives at Ray's place, and unfortunately Bobby hasn't had a chance to tell him about Cliff. Donna is practically begging Ray to tell her to dump Cliff and be with him, but his stubborn cowboy pride just makes him say, "Oh shucks, I'm happy for ya. Ray talks with Bobby about being a Ewing and how scared he was. Bobby tells Ray that he should tell her that he's a Ewing, but before it can go any further, the foreman from Ewing 23 shows up and tells him that some nut is threatening Ewing 23. You might say there's trouble at Ewing 23. With Bobby gone, JR returns to the office and starts snooping, even enlisting Luella to help him. At lunch, Cliff tells Pamela that he doesn't care if their mother is alive. After all, she left. Pamela also accuses him of having ulterior motives for wanting to be with Donna Culver. What kind of indictment of Cliff is it when his own sister accurately accuses him of having ulterior motives for being with a nice, beautiful woman? Bobby enlists Connie and Luella to find Jock, but when JR finds out, he takes over operations. Yeah, this reminds me of the time that Bobby got kidnapped and JR had to run point on that. Just to show Bobby he's not joking, the mad bomber what bombs at midday blows up a tool shed as a demonstration. 
Bobby agrees to raise the cash, which rubs JR the wrong way. So he starts calling banks and telling them not to raise the money. I don't understand. I know you don't, Franklin. That's why I'm richer than you are. JR has done some dastardly things in his day, but this might be the funniest. If only because it perfectly screws over Bobby and Cliff. Bobby rounds up a posse and starts a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and doghouse in the area. But the search turns out to be a dud. Despite JR's best efforts, the bank is able to produce the money by going to the banks in Fort Worth. Hell, there are other banks. The next few minutes play out like the crop dusting scene in North by Northwest, with Bobby simply looking around and the editor cutting in a bunch of shots of oil wells. Just when this is about to get boring, JR arrives with the money. The disgruntled former employee, Gillis, rushes out to meet the plane, only for good old JR to double cross him with some armed guards. A shootout ensues, and with Gillis's last breath, he sets Ewing 23 ablaze. And we're out. Well, this was a mixed bag if ever there was one. The relationship stuff with the Ewings was pretty great. Ray and Ellie having a tense moment of bonding was good because we so rarely get Ray and Ellie scenes. And that scene is going to set up Ray's character arc for the next few seasons, as well as Ellie's arc this season. It's just unfortunate they couldn't have done more with it due to Jim Davis's passing. The Bobby and Pam scenes continue to be grating, but at least they're grating in a different way than they've been in the past two seasons. There's that. On the other hand, Pam and Cliff's scene at his apartment was wonderful, especially the way Pamela nailed Cliff's dating strategies from his spending habits. And the really brilliant thing is what it reveals about his relationship with Donna Culver, because he's still on first date behavior for Donna. All that from a little good-natured ribbing. And now for the not so good. Everything about the oil wells. Which is the part that feels like it was a made-for-TV movie script that didn't get produced, so they reworked it into a Dallas episode. Bobby looks like such an ineffectual wuss in this episode, and it's because he's trying to play the tough guy. I'll meet him at the park. That isn't necessary. Yes, it is. Somebody's got a beef with a Ewing, I want to be there. And despite what I think should happen in a real-life scenario like this, JR has a point that Bobby looks weak kowtowing to terrorists. Dramatically, it would have been better to have him coming up with a third solution, even if that solution was also ruined by JR. Speaking of, JR tips over into full-on cartoony villain, basically having a man killed and letting him blow up the wells to make Bobby look bad. I don't know. It's somehow beneath JR to engage in a plot so thrown together as this one. Where's my Machiavellianism? You lousy fucks, you blew an oil field and had a man killed! Bobby, he pulled a gun on those boys. What were they supposed to do? There's no other job. If you can get over the Mad Bomber story, it's fine. But it's clear there's a wide chasm in quality between the character scenes and the plot. And that's not going away anytime soon. 